plasma volume. So it's saying that if 25% of her blood volume is red cells, hematocrit, what is the other 73% of her blood? 25 23% is red. Mm -hmm. What's the plasma. other one? Plasma. The other is plasma. Mm -hmm. So now the machine knows of all of the blood volume coming into this machine, a certain percentage is your plasma. Mm -hmm. That helps Optia set the speed of the plasma pump. Mm -hmm. It is the plasma pump's main job in life to control, establish the interface position. You cannot do an apheresis procedure without an interface. Mm -hmm. This is the most critical piece of data for the formation of the interface. Mm -hmm. That is the piece of data that's used first, the hematocrit. And then finally, AIM wakes up, mm -hmm. becomes active, and takes over the monitoring and the controlling of the interface position, adjusting the same pump flow rate, the plasma pump flow rate. Then the rest of the story for a collection is that then AIM, once she's got interface, mm -hmm. she's looking to see how concentrated the cells are coming up the collect port. Mm -hmm. And she's adjusting the same pump mm -hmm. flow rate to meet that target collection preference that you set on the collection status screen. This pump, this piece of data, critical to interface formation and maintenance. So what if you have the hematocrit level that's not accurate on the day of collection? Let's just say that it was done maybe three or four days ago. Would the machine tell us that interface... Let's set it too high so you can see this. I can okay. see you're not going to be happy until we do it. And I'm happy to do it. Okay. Make it 30%. I know it's... Or make it 30... Um, yeah, 30%. 30 let's try 30. Okay. It shouldn't be that high, but we'll see. All right. Okay. Just type a little bit. There you go. 30%. All right, so now we're telling the machine that Blanca's hematocrit is actually higher than we feel it is, at least I'm guessing on the crit, truly, okay? okay? okay. And so what will happen is that AIM will make as many adjustments to the plasma pump flow rate as she can based on this piece of data, and the interface still will not be ideal. And what's the ideal interface position? 50-50. 50-50. Mm -hmm. Grab the cards for me, please. That means the connector is half filled with plasma and half filled with what else? Uh, red blood red cells. cells. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this is what we're trying to obtain in that connector, that old 50-50 interface position right here. All right. Because we entered a crit that's way too high, we should get an interface alarm. The name of the alarm is interface taking too long to establish. What piece of data will the troubleshooting suggest we correct? Probably adjust your hematocrit level. Right. Not probably, but yeah. darn tootin' it will, okay? Yeah. The ch and I like causing this alarm, so thanks for bringing it up. And I'll tell you why. Because to troubleshoot it, it's really a challenge. You have to dig through five causes to get to the actual cause for your alarm. And and most people, if they, they're not familiar with about the importance of this piece of data, mm -hmm. struggle with troubleshooting it, okay? H hematocrit is the usual culprit for an inaccurately placed interface, okay? So if I've guessed correctly at too high of a hematocrit, what we're gonna see is that the red cell layer will be way low. It won't be in its proper position and we should get an alarm. Okay. Keeping fingers crossed, I don't know if I said it high enough. Right. I mean, we could do 40 if you wanted, but then the troubleshooting is going to be inaccurate right. because the troubleshooting will be the reverse of spillover. Remember spillover? Yeah. Just, what did you the red do? Cells just They're spill spilling the into the plasma because the red cell layer is way too high. What did you do to correct that on spectra? I just adjust the the hematocrit. Up or down? Uh, if it's too high, I think I put the plasma in to lower that interface. So I would adjust it. If it's spill over, that means high, so low, lower my hematocrit. Other way. The other way, mm -hmm. higher. We raise the crit by how many points? I think back then it's like three points. Three, same for Optia. Okay. But in this case, when our hematocrit is too high and the red cell layer is way too low, oh, you raise we're them. going to decrease the crit by three. three. Okay. This is the opposite of spillover. 
spillover was red cell layer too high. Right. We increased the crit by three. Right. That tells the machine too that there is pump. less plasma, so it slows the pump and tamps down the red cell layer. Okay. In this instance, AIM can't even get that red cell layer up to the appropriate level. And so what we will do is decrease the hematocrit, tells the machine there's more incoming plasma, speeds up the plasma pump, pulls it out, red cell layer rises up. Okay. Two opposite problems. So as an experienced operator not being real clear on spillover versus this one, you want to make sure you're reading that troubleshooting mm -hmm. so you don't move the crit in the wrong direction mm -hmm. and make the problem worse. But with the opt it would tell you what to Absolutely. do. It would direct you so that way you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to guess. Yeah. Remember, one of the things I might have said yesterday, can't remember, is it, it, use the Nike logo. Just do it. All right. Even if you're not sure why you're doing it, that will come later, the understanding. But you need to get this procedure off and running so you're just going to do what Opti is telling you to do. Okay? All right. Let's, um, in fact, let's do this. Let's try it. Let's try it even higher. Let's try 35. And I know what will happen. I know that crit's not 35. Yeah. I want to be able to see that alarm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So an actual, because we don't see our patient on the day of. We see them for screening like days before. Mm -hmm. And what if the hematocrit level is not accurate? Yeah. I remember what I said. Uh, a patient's hematocrit, first of all, is not going to change drastically in three days. Just guaranteed. Yeah. Unless they sat at home and had a big GI bleed, right? Mm -hmm. Or got transfused in the three days that you didn't see them. Yeah. And AIM will deal with a slight discrepancy mm -hmm. quite well. So don't make it worse than it is for our newbie here. We're yeah. trying to make yeah. it fun. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> No, it's not scary. I think that the Optia is you're, very... You're not, gonna, you're not gonna see that big of a change yeah. unless the lab has really screwed up on their data reporting mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. given you a crit that's just not true to the patient's actual scenario. Okay. So is it partially working? What's that? Is it supposed to be... It's not even... It's it, it done priming. Still. We've completed the first portion of automated prime. We entered the patient data, mm -hmm. gender, height, weight, and adequate. Then when I confirmed all of that data, up popped the run value screen. This is the one I affectionately call nasty numbers. Okay. One of the things you'll notice is that there is a dividing line right here. So this is really two screens. This is a screen and this is a screen. They're separate. All of these are run parameters set for you today because it's your data that's in here mm -hmm. using the default settings the fact you're doing a CMNC mm -hmm. okay Optia spit out calculated all of the pump flow rates here they are AC inlet plasma collect four pumps AC inlet plasma collect each of them has a flow rate in bills per minute see it mm -hmm. the collect pump flow rate always defaults to one mill a minute this pump right here. Underneath the flow rates is a, a line of current volumes which is blank because we're not running yet. So this will show how many mills have passed over the AC pump, the inlet pump, the plasma pump, and the collect pump up to this moment in time in our procedure. But it's not nothing's there yet because we mm -hmm. haven't started. What we are showing is by the end of the day when the collection is finished after 222 minutes these are the volumes that each of our pumps will have pumped. We're going to need 644 mils of citrate. Over the inlet pump, this is the pump that pumps your whole blood mm -hmm. and the citrate to the centrifuge. Mm -hmm. We are going to process 7.7 .7 liters. There will be no plasma in the concurrent plasma bag. In the collect bag, there's 215 mils of cell product. And added to that will be what? 15. 50 mils of what? Plasma. Plasma's Plasma, going yeah. in that bag as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are the run values, the pump flow rates and volumes. The top line of numbers then shows us some additional values that came straight out of our default menu. The AC infusion rate we're going to discuss today, the ratio, and the fact that we're going to process twice your blood volume mm. before the run is over. And your blood volume was 30, 30 what? 
3,500. 3, yeah. Around. So twice your blood volume, look, is this value. Mm -hmm. Seven liters of whole blood mm -hmm. is what we got to put through this machine before mm -hmm. you're done. Wow. Okay? okay? And it's going to take 220 minutes, four hours, a little mm -hmm. under four hours. So Blanca, on the order, I give the uh, provider a, a choice, a checkbox, either process two times, mm -hmm. 12 liters, six liters, or others. Some of the team here are so used to checking that 12 liter mm -hmm. box. So let's say that we have an order that's a 12 liter process. We just change that number, right? Put here. it there. Go ahead, do it. This is a perfect time to do it since no patients on here. Mm -hmm. So 12 liters is 12,000 mils, right? Because mm -hmm. this is expressed in mils. You see mm -hmm. the, le the unit of measure. Mm -hmm. So when you do 12 liters, look at how long you're going to be sitting here. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be processing almost three and a half times your blood volume. Okay. If you're going to process longer, you're going to use more citrate, process more inlet volume, have more volume in the collect bag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Now the other thing we did yesterday was uh, we raised the AC infusion rate to a mill a minute to get things to happen faster. I think today, in the interest of time, let's just start off at that conservative AC infusion rate until we understand the AC management here, okay? So we'll leave that as is. So really, we did nothing to this screen. We looked at the numbers. Mm -hmm. This is what popped up for you, Blanca, mm -hmm. for your collection mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And there's really nothing you have to adjust here mm -hmm. um, with respect to starting up the procedure mm -hmm. unless the way you practice changes or you've got a different order for a different amount of whole blood to process, okay?